first thing I want to say is is welcome to talk in a fast lane, man. I'm uh I'm really happy to have a chance to talk with you. Thank you for having me, man. It's an honor. That's really cool. Well, you know, first I want to say is uh congratulations on this new album. I mean, this thing when 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 John Kivel sent it to me, he said, Did you hear the new No Love Lost album? I said, No, I haven't heard it yet. I think I heard I think I did hear one song. That that's what it was. And uh right. So we kind of talked about it, and he sent it to me. And then that was the end right there. <laughs> I'm glad you like it, man. It, it's, 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 we're really proud of this, of this release, man. We put a lot into it, and, and so is the label. And uh, it came out, it, it's, 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 it's better than we, we could hunt for, really. Really, it has. And the response has been fantastic to it. So we're really happy with that. That's great to hear. That's great to hear. That was actually one of my questions is, uh, you know, with these songs, you know, and, and how well structured this is. I mean, it's I told John that it reminds me kind of like a foreigner album that's came that's come out in 2024. <laughs> right. Cool. Cool. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. One of my favorites to Barner, of course. But yeah, man, it's 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 uh, very commercial and intentionally commercial. You know, we, we intentionally wrote it like that, you know, right. Um uh, trying to write, you know, uh, maybe 10 singles if we could, if we could, if, or if we could p choose 10 singles, you know, from the, the group of songs that we had, then right. that would be great. But yeah, we definitely, we definitely set out to, to try and, 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 and write a hit if we can, if, if you know, if there is such a thing anymore. <laughs> That's right. 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 I think you guys did great with it though. You know, and and I, when I listened to it, I told John this too. I listened, I bet you I listened four or five times through, you know, since I had the CD and, uh, you know, so awesome. many great songs. I mean, I think about, you know, Love Gone Wrong, Broken Heart. And, mm -hmm. and my favorite is, as we discussed in the chat, the one day, Fighting for Your Love. Right. It's a great song. You Love know, that, this, that, was this, a, that was actually the first song that we wrote for this new, for the last call thing. Uh, about a year ago, yeah, the very first one that we that we all put together. That's cool. That's a, yep. That's a great song, and you know, and and this is this is the band's third album, you know, and and, and I hear, you know, the the progression, you know what I mean, from the start, and you can hear you guys growing the whole way through, you right, know, and, right. and 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 from start to finish. Like I said, this one came together, you know, perfectly. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, we definitely have progressed as a band, as writing, as writers, and everything. Uh, a lot more from the first album because we we we're you know since we got with the Kibble label, uh, and since Bliss and this new album, we have more focused direction on you know the style that we want to write with each song. You know, right. it's melodic hard rock, it, as you know, very eighties esque if we can. You know. Right as much of the little uh, the, those influences as we can throw into it you know and that that's what we want to do and uh for sure it's progressed and i think we we're getting we're getting on a roll with it a little bit i think you know as far as and this last album um the role of songwriting that i'm talking about came really really easily and really efficiently and and easily uh because mark had had a lot of these uh complete song ideas ready to go and just threw it to me and it just like inspired me to to come up with stuff immediately for it so a lot of these ideas that you hear on last call came together really really fast and that that's um that's the way they should be really you know you should you should let that magic happen if they you know if you hear something that sounds great you know roll with it and that's exactly what we did especially songs like you know keep the fire burning and and stuff like that for sure that's great to hear it too and, and you know with the you know with this being the third album and everything you mm -hmm. know you could hear the uh you know the the process like i said it it, it it seems like it was seamless so when you wanted to record this what was the the recording process overall you know now like like i said the third album there had to be that level of comfort going in and saying man that right. now we have it you know yeah well we knew we had some good songs and Mark, the whole time, Mark was learning um, a lot 
of the recording process for his home studio that he was building. And uh, we were cutting all the demos there and the demos, the, the, the stuff that he was learning and the way he was, and, and, this, and the, as good as he was getting at it, it, the demo sounded really, really good, you know? And so um, we just, uh, we just rolled with that and we used a lot of, of his home studio to cut most of the album, actually all the guitars, all the drums, um, everything was, was cut there except for my vocals. We went back into the studio that we did, that we did the vocals in, uh, for bliss over at John Fitner's studio in Winston Salem and to do that. But yeah. Um, and I think that, uh, we're going to have the process down so good that the next album we're probably going to all do at, at Mark's studio, that everything vocals and everything. And so it's great. We're looking forward to doing that too. It's we had a lot of fun there, and Mark's really learned so much. And I, I just can't say enough about um, the the toil and trouble that he put into to Last Call and learning how to, uh, you know, to produce this album and get all the sounds and everything that he wanted and all the gu guitar tones and everything that that he wanted. And, and it's just uh, he's perfecting it really good. I'm really really proud of that. Yeah, he did an excellent job on it. It doesn't. You know, it has that 80s vibe, but it has the modern sound too. It's like a perfect mix because it's real. Really? Yeah, it's it, it has the heavy, it has the mellow. It's a, you know, it's a really good, good fit, you know, production wise. Yeah. There's no yeah. doubt. Well, we hear, you know, when we, when we hear the, the songs presented to us, you know, when Mark presents a song to me or we, we present a song to each other, we, we instantly hear an idea over it or we hear that idea that was just presented to us sounding like something that we've heard before you know that that triggers you know an uh, inspiration in us to say oh this sounds like you know 80s kiss so we should really roll with that that kind of feel with that because it really right. would fit good with that idea right. so that's just how it works like that and we, and that's what we do we and we consciously consciously try and grab like i say those 80s and melodic hard rock influences all that we can put put into that you know that right. that's a conscious thing that we try and do for sure i think it's great to hear that style too because it's not you know back then obviously the production wasn't as good you know i mean it, it didn't start getting really good until like the you know the early 90s even up to mid 90s and by that time it was you know phased out but it, it's great to hear something with this kind of of style hit this right. good absolutely you know a lot of the the bands from that era when they when they uh throughout the 2000s anyway when they would record new albums the ones that did you know they kind of tried to follow the newer trends and stuff like that a little heavier a little i don't i won't call it grungy but you know really heavy and 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 dark that kind of thing you know instead right. of really uh trying to embrace what got them to where they are in the first place and go and, and grab those original ideas and inspirations. And truthfully, that's what their fans are waiting for. They're waiting, they're, they're listening. Hey, are they going to put out something that sounds like, you know, this or that, that we right. know so well and love so much. And so uh, that's something you, you know, that's what the, I think no love loss is conscious of when we write and when we record is, is that and trying to, trying to keep, you know, that that focus and 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 bring that into it because I think that is something special and something that's missing, like you say, man. That's right. That's right. You know, you you just mentioned that right there, and I I wanted to talk about uh, you know, again, you know, with the production of this and and Mark and you know, obviously Ty, you know, the mm -hmm. way he did the the mixing and mastering. Oh yeah. And, and and you know, John with the with his piece too, because it seems like everything that he sends me has the big hooks and the and the big <laughs> choruses, so. What's right. it like working with him and, and guys like that? Because it's nice to see a, a guy that, that owns a label involved. It, it's great. He is. It's a, it's a brotherly family kind of thing. Really? It really is. Yeah. Yeah. He, he, he comes down on us and wants the, the very best songs out, out of us and the very, you know, more commercial, you know, the stuff that everybody's going to want, of course, you know, uh, we don't get to do every song, you know, that, that we wrote, you know, and, um, but we still 
are you, we still get the best out of what we've out of what we've got for sure through John and he really pushes us and drives us to do that and it's like a a a good coach you know pushing it right. pushing, pushing <laughs> that's right forward down the field and and that's what we are man we're all a big a, a cool working team and it's working pretty efficiently now that we've got you know three albums under our belt and and some 10 years now with kibble records so yeah right. it's working great man it really is that's that's great to hear it's great to hear like the backstories you know and, yeah and, and i i love the the songs that you guys write you know it's a uh, everything's very well structured you know like the choruses are you know just solid the you know the uh the bridge you know, the, the, and and how melodic everything is. What's what's the songwriting process for No Love Lost? Like if you go in to write a song, is it something you come in with an idea? Is it a chorus? How do you guys yeah. go about that? Thank you. I appreciate that, man. Yeah, we uh, uh, before in in in, uh, in the band and and in most bands that I've been in that that did original stuff, you would have you know one or two guys bring have a riff to start with you know and you and you'd work on that if it sounded like a, a good commercial riff that could be built into a song and a lot of times you know our process over the years has been you know the guys would bring in a riff or several riffs or a, a song with several riffs and i hear okay this this idea and that idea fit really well together let's pull these two things out of that whole big thing and streamline it and we'll make a song out of that. Heaven Sent from Bliss was a lot like that. Uh, Jason had uh, two different guitar licks, and I took those two licks and put them together into the song, went home, did some lyrics, and came back. And the process would be kind of like that, you know, or, and I don't, I, you know, I'm not a producer or anything like that, but I, I, I think I got a pretty good ear for melody and, you know, the song structure and what, what needs to come next. Um, so I would hear ideas like that and I would kind of break it down and, and um, you know, put the songs together like that. But this time, like I say, Mark uh, was so inspiring because he came in and he would have an idea that was totally complete from start to finish. Very melodic hook at the beginning, all the way to the end, you know, the bridge, the chorus, all just fit perfectly. I was like, man, there's nothing I need to even suggest. <laughs> yeah, this is great. And right, like I right. said, you know, it would be inspiring and I, all of a sudden stuff, the lyrics would start clicking and, you know, we came back with Keep the Fire Burning in two days, completely, wow, completely so nice. and, and as a demo, like you hear it, pretty much like you hear it on the album right now. And uh, so, yeah, that was a, it was, it didn't take long to know that that was going to be a, a good, uh, efficient, like I say, process to go mm -hmm. through and that, that Mark was, uh, was what's the riff master and just uh, has a plethora of ideas so let's just roll with that and so that was it was just very effortless effortlessly <laughs> uh, right, right. yeah it, it was great it was great and that's that's the way it should be it, it should be like that you know the, the song should flow together like that 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 easily and when you hear it when the magic comes together like that you you yeah. don't mess with it you just let it let it flow and and right. uh, yeah, some of the stuff on our, you know, some of the stuff we do is has a little more pop sensibility to it, you know, mm -hmm. uh, you know, a little more, um, uh, you know, a little more pop rocky kind of kind of style to it, maybe cheap trick kind of kind of uh, mm -hmm. vibe to it, whatever like that. Uh, to it's a description, but I think most of it is undeniable, really, uh, it, that it that it's undeniably good, you know across the board you know right. whether you know more pop or is or it's or it's a little more heavier idea um and that's that's what we that's what we shoot for on, on each idea but that's pretty much the process now and i'm really and the the new pro the new stuff that we're writing for the next album that we're working on is coming together the same way and mark is just just bam 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 i mean i've already heard a whole album's full of ideas right now wow. that i I'll, absolutely uh, we went through at least 10 ideas at, at our rehearsal the other night for our, for our shows that we just did. That's and, cool. uh, yeah. So yeah, we can't wait to jump on those. Can't wait to jump on those for sure. Well, but believe me, our, our ears are open, man. Yeah. That's usually <laughs> the process though, especially now that's, 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 that's our, 
our goal and, and the way we're going to approach it for sure. Yeah, that's great to hear a song. Like, like you said, uh, like, you know, let's keep the fire burning and, and they do it in two days. And it seems like, like some of the best songs, you know, like the most popular, the ones that really, you know, stick in your head. And that's one of them come, right. come together in two days like that seamlessly. Right, right, right. Well, you know, you, you, you hear the stories about, um, uh, Def Leppard, they put, you know, they put pour some sugar on me together right there in the studio and, and, mm -hmm. and pretty much finished it that night, you know, as, right. as far as the structure and everything. So yeah, they, again, they, they rolled, they rolled with it and it's like, up, oh, nobody's going home tonight. We're, we're, we're finishing this. <laughs> so it. yeah, that's the way, it, that's the way it goes. Not to compare us to, 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 to Def Leppard, but, but again, that's the songwriting process is, is, is all the same like that, you know? That's it. When you get on that roll, you just got to stick with it. Right. And, right. And, and let it roll through. You know, you, yeah. you just talked about, uh, you know, some of the shows that you just did, some of the live stuff. Um, yeah. What was it like? I mean, you had a chance to play the new songs. What what kind of reaction did you get from the audience? It seemed I got to hear a little bit, you know. Great. Uh, great. It was great. It, it went went really well. We first started uh, doing the new songs back at New England Rock Fest back in October for, for uh, the, the label through up in, in New England. And that was a lot of fun. And uh, it was a great response to the new songs there. And the band just, just kicked butt at that show. And uh, these new shows that we just did, we did one in Greensboro and one in Charlotte uh, this past Saturday. All of them went fantastically. And, and, and for, a bunch of original songs in a set that no one's ever heard before. It was, it was a lot of, a lot of, uh, pleased people. And we, we did a lot of, a lot of merchandise and sold, sold out of all the CDs. So that's a good testament to this weekend for sure, right. to this, this run. So, so yeah, we did great. And, and the fans are really in, embracing it. Um, uh, I went out to a show last night and saw one of our t-shirts out there. You know, I'm like, yeah, okay, cool. It, this is working. All right. That's it. That's it. This is how it to be. Yes. All you got to do is hear this album, everybody. I mean, I'm telling you, it's uh, it's fantastic. You know, like I said, I, I told John the other day, I said, you know, when I when I listen to something and it kind of, you know, hits you, you know what I mean? It hits you in the in the heart, in the head, and, and you like it that much. That's how that's I felt when I listened to this. I mean, honestly, that's a oh, fantastic that's right. stuff here. Fantastic right. stuff. That's what we want, man. You know, it's, it's to touch touch those heartstrings, no pun intended, uh, uh, of all the listeners that, that love that melodic hard rock, 80s, true 80s style melodic hard rock. Uh, you know, if this if this was 1989, uh, Last Call would be, I think, I would really think would be all over the radio. I think so, too. For sure. Yeah, you definitely have probably four or five songs easily that would that would fit the radio and and, and people would love it. You're right. You're right. Oh, absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. You know, I wanted to bring up uh, you know one of the hot topics that happened last year, and obviously it was the the Vinny Vincent situation. Mm -hmm. You know, when he brought it up, and hey, you know Scott's going to be the the singer, and then you know Nashville, and you guys did that show, and and then all of a sudden, boom. Tell us about that because I, I mean, it doesn't surprise me, but it also, right. you know, it's a, you know, a topic I know the fans want to hear a little bit about. Right. Well, the the Vinny story is a slippery one, of course. Right. And it right. always it always is, always has been. You know, uh, anyone would tell you that. Uh, it, it started really uh, from. It, it's kind of a long one, so I try to I try to st streamline it because it's. <laughs> get in every detail that I would want you to know uh, uh it, it's it's hard to to streamline that story it really is uh right. but it really started for me around 2019 a friend of mine reached out to me who was who uh was in contact with with his contact uh about he he wanted to put together his band again and uh, so I I did some demos of uh, three of his songs I think it was uh shoot you full of love Boys are gonna rock, and um, I forget the other one. Maybe it was Animal or Twisted, but I did I did some demos of me singing maybe thirty seconds of those of those songs because he was just gonna listen to the first you know thirty seconds to see if the if he liked the tone of the voice if it was if it was like the original singer. 
because that's right. what he was looking for was that right. kind of vocal. And uh, I made it through, through his, through his, through the gauntlet, if you will. Uh, and uh, <laughs> I, and and I, he wanted to hear some more demos of me in a different light. And so I sent some, you know, some no love lost stuff, of course, and some some stuff of me doing, you know, uh, my White Snake band that I did, and Zeppelin thing that I did, several things like that. And uh, right after that, I think the pandemic kicked into full gear and I never heard anything else. And I figured that was that was a lot of the reason why. Uh, so fast forward up to 2023, uh, my friend called me back and said, hey, you still have those those demos uh, because Benny is is looking uh, for someone to to sing with him and perform at this party that we, he was going to have the event in Nashville. I said, yeah. sure. Yeah, yeah. So I sent them out, um, listened to them again, and then I, I actually I just sang some, sang some of his stuff over the phone, you know, not to him personally, but did some phone, some phone audio things, and right. sent those, and he liked those a lot. And then, uh, so I was in, chosen by Vinny personally, and uh, then the phone, uh, phone conversation started happening with me and Vinny for a long time. We talked just every other day, actually. Uh, it, everything went really well. And I got to say, you know, through everything, Vinny was always very, very nice to me. Very, very sweet guy. Very nice right. to me. Very nice to, uh, to my wife when we went out there to Nashville. And always, always people around him were very, very nice and very accommodating to me the whole time. I do right. want to mention that. Uh, right. But um, so we were, we were having a lot of phone conversations about what he wanted to do. Uh, he wanted to, wanted to go out. He said he had management uh ready to go uh ready to go out and 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 play he wanted to go and do live dates that we were going to uh, go into the studio uh where he was rehearsing out there in nashville and and record uh uh video demos for the for the live aspect of it and everything right. um a lot of plans were in the works uh including me coming back in and and doing re-recording all systems go their second album um, no. I think he's always wanted to do that. Um, uh, and, um, uh, Benny, I was told that Benny had his complete band out there, completely ready, completely tight, completely ready to go. And they were all committed and ready, ready to go. And he yeah. gave me a list of about six or seven, uh, Benny Vincent songs and two or three, uh, Benny Vincent era kiss songs that we were going to play at this event. And so, okay. Me, trust me when I say, as a lifelong Kiss fan and Benny fan and and everything like that, and a professional at heart, when I take on a, a role like this in in whatever kind of band it is, cover or otherwise, yeah. I was absolutely tour ready when I got to Nashville for this thing. Yeah. I was ready to blow it out of the water for this guy. Um, soon after I got there, like I say, everything was nice. Everything was very cool. Uh, Soon after I got there, it was apparent that uh, before we were going to do the jam, which was Saturday night of, the, of that weekend, uh, mm -hmm. that there was no band. The band was not wow. existing. There was no band. He was not ready to play. Uh, quite frankly, the, the guy made every excuse in the book not to play. Uh, wow. In a nutshell, in a nutshell, uh, it's my belief that uh, that a lot of the reasons that you don't hear him hear him play and you know, there's a lot of stealth you know video there's there's nothing you you haven't heard any notes from this guy in a very very long time uh, right. the reason you don't is from what I saw personally right up you know when he finally did play was that uh, it's not good and and I don't believe the guy uh, can play to the capacity that he used to. And this is right. why he, in my opinion, he's hiding it. And that's why right. you don't, that's why you don't, you don't see much from him. And that's why you hear these excuses time and time and time again right. is because of that. If that's my opinion, you know, and maybe if he can, if he can still play like he used to, I, from what I experienced, uh, he's not willing to put in the time and get ready and, 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 and be ready and, and do that. Uh, right. again, from what I heard that night, any guitar player 
and I've, I've played with some really badass guitar players over the years and, and seen a lot of them too. I'm a big fan of, big fan of the guitar. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, and from what I've seen, uh, if any, any guitar player that, that was supposedly that badass and still had all, all his chops going and was ready to go, you know, writing songs and everything would have, would have played way more and way better than, than what I heard. It, it was, uh, it wasn't promising. So, uh, I'm like, okay. So, uh, I mean, you know, it was very, it was a very nervous situation, not on my part either. Uh, I would, like I say, I was ready for all these, all these songs right. and, uh, he was not, and there was no band. So what happened that night, we, we talked him into, uh, doing the jam, which, uh, he was very reluctant to do and very nervous about doing. And, um, uh, when we finally did it, it was sort of a loose seven, eight minute jam of, of the song lick it up that, that didn't really, uh, didn't really sound a lot like, like lick it up. But during that, I tried, you know, to do the, uh, page plant trade-off with, with Vinny during that jam, you know, you, you know, yeah, 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 you know, get him to, yeah, I am, you know, right, so right. that, you know, get him to open up. Speech and, 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 you know, hear a little bit of that. And, and, um, uh, like I say, um, it, it just, it just didn't, uh, it just wasn't ready at all. It wasn't ready at all. Not, not as promised, not, not ready as promised, uh, to me. And, um, uh, so yeah. from there, I was like, okay, well, let's just, uh, let's try and, uh, concentrate on maybe getting in the studio and, and doing that recording he wanted me to do, you know? And, uh, from there, uh, it wasn't, you know, he made the announcement right after the, after the, uh, event and he made the announcement at the event to the people that were there and, um, uh, that I was a new lead singer and what we were going to do, we were going out on the road and the whole works. Uh, right. by the way, the jam that we did was with some local uh nashville uh musicians that are stellar musicians so we we got back in there in the room and i was like well benny you know we don't have a bass player and a drummer here what are we going to do we're going to do a sort of a, a a loose sort of acoustic you know you crank up the guitar and me scream over it kind of thing here or what are we going to do right. so we, we just kind of we just kind of brought those guys in to just kind of set in you know and 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 do that with us uh very very loose jam very very loose jam uh nothing organized whatsoever about it uh, but yeah man you know uh after that it uh he made the announcement a, a few days later after that you know to the world on his site and i shared that and uh great a lot of praise from all my friends and all all fans of, of stuff that i've done over the years and everything from everyone and and everybody rooting me on and, and that's awesome man go for it right. and uh, you know i was i was hopefully i was giving it the benefit of the doubt i'm not a, uh on that situation i'm i'm a huge huge kiss fan and so i know all the stories i've seen all the podcasts i've watched every detail and i know some i also know some details that that other people don't know right. before and so uh so I did not go into it blindly and I did not go into it, you know, just blown away by, wow, I'm going to play with Vinnie Vincent. I'm like, okay, man, let me, you know, what do you got? You know, what do you got? Yeah. You, you were ready. See. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I didn't see much. I mean, I got to tell you, man. And, and I think that is, that's the reason, you know, for all the fans that are wondering what's the, what's the deal? What's the deal with this guy? I think, I think a lot of it's that or reluctancy, to, to put the time in that he would know he knows it would take to get back out and the way he wants wants to wants to be the, the player that he would want to be of course or would have to be or be expected to be by the fans I, I, I don't uh, I just don't see that happening I just don't see that happen I don't see him putting the effort into it from what I saw uh, that and just a reluctance to to uh, seeming a seeming re seemingly reluctance to play by the rules that all the bands have to play by when they go out nowadays, you know, right. working with, working with multiple band packages, that kind of thing. You know, you can't just go in, you know, 
you know, dictating anything whatsoever right. when you do the things. That's where that's where the money is nowadays for all those bands. That's right. And so you have to be able to play by those rules. I didn't see that from from the talks and everything. I didn't hear I didn't hear that. But yeah, I've had a lot of smoke blown up my butt on that one. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I told him after it was I, I'd like to do a a, a more you know organized jam next time that would be great you know and and he was like oh don't worry about organization you know i'm not i'm worried about organization he said this is about this is about you and me the guitarist and the singer and i'm like oh, okay man well that doesn't you know right. blow my head up anything right. you like wow right. man yeah no this is about let's get tight and let's have a you know real a real meaningful thing or this can't can't go out you know and do what you want right. it to do and if it's about money for the guy, I can't, I can't, I hate to be long winded about this story, but if no, it's, it's about great. the guy, there's his money every, every other weekend or whatever, do those fly ins like everybody else does and make a few thousand dollars, you know, and, and, and go home and, and do it the right way, right. you know? Right. And if the guy, do you think, I would think if the guy could still play like he wanted to there, he would have already done that. I agree. So from what I from what I saw, from what Scott Board saw, no, he's not there anymore. That's my opinion of that. But in a nutshell, that's what happened. And then after about a week later, one of my bands actually, I, I got a uh, one of my bands posted. You know, we had a lot of people in our local area emailing our bands and you know hey is scott going to be able to continue this and, and do that now that he's doing the Benny thing and all that and, and uh right. so they made a little post saying that yeah, yes i would be continuing with with all my projects and stuff and no love lost of course but uh yeah. but my other bands made a little post that i would be continuing and on you know and uh and it the same night i got a uh message from from benny's camp saying, hey, uh, he didn't like that. You might ought to take that down. And so we did. I did that. I had it removed. And uh, obviously that wasn't good enough. So I think what happened right there was it blew the Vinny narrative of, man, he's got so much going on, quote, unquote, that Scott can't do anything. There's nothing, you know. And so yeah. I think that kind of blew the, blew the narrative of that, that Vinny has so much going on that, you know, uh, maybe maybe that's what it is, you know. I want to get all the fans engaged because there's oh wow there's new there's new invasion stuff happening and uh let's get on board with that well that's great you know but you know um you gotta back it up yeah yeah exactly 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 but uh again on my part i was completely ready for that gig completely ready to to blow it out and 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 do that that gig for sure and that's not some heart that's some very very hard vocals and i tell you what oh, yeah. flash put down on that on that first album and what mark did on the second album is phenomenal and it's right. very very hard uh but when benny heard a lot of my other videos of me singing doing different bands and especially when he heard me doing white snake stuff he was like that he said dude do it like that do it like that that soul and do it you got this do it your way handle it your way you don't worry about, you know, nailing it exactly like the album because, you know, you, you'll you do all the nuances that people will want to hear from right. that. And so that's the approach I did with it. And I was like, okay, woo, great. I don't have to, you know, blow my blow my head off with these vocals here. That's right. <laughs> so, yeah, so that's the approach I used for that. And I was, I'm telling you, I was completely ready to, to go and do that. If he wanted to go out that week and do some major shows, I, could, okay. I was ready for that. But... Uh, yeah, again, you know, there was nothing, there was nothing there, nothing there for me to go out on and, and, it, and it turned into that. It's a shame. Uh, so yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure other than that, I'm not sure what's, what's going on out there. Um, I, I noticed that his newest event just got canceled. It's supposed to be this weekend. I hate right. that. Right. Uh, I did hear, hear, uh, videos of his, of his new singer. And I think it's really, really good, really good voice. Right. And, uh, you know, I just hope that, uh, again, I hope the guy gets it together and, and goes on out there. But what I saw was, okay, I'm like, okay, that's it. That That's why you're not, that's why I haven't heard a note from you in 30 years. 
is because he, if you haven't been playing, even if there's, there's not a physical, you know, element, you know, to not being able to play like arthritis or whatever, right. If you haven't been playing, right. then you're going to lose it. In, you're going to lose that too. So I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm skeptical with that. Very, very skeptical. You know, it's a, it's a shame that, you know, that he, you know, would call you out, you know, to come out and do that because I mean, obviously, I mean, you're a professional, you, you take this seriously. I mean, just listen to what you do and, and everything that you do. And then to bring you out there and, and kind of string you along, it almost looked like a, a, pub, a publicity stunt to, right, you know, right. to, uh, to get the pub. And then, right. you know, just, it's a, it's a bad way to do business. Right. Well, I think from what I saw, everybody around him is like in, in the Vinny world and and in the Vinny narrative, or or you don't you don't stay in the Vinny world. Hence his new his new uh, pricing for his Facebook page. You know, uh, let's get rid of the riffraff. Well, the riffraff, I suppose, is is the uh, the fans on there that that have any questions whatsoever <laughs> about. <laughs> that's a little bit that's a little bit weird what's what why 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 you know right. oh they got it. so so that that's a lot of that i believe too is is right. again there's a narrative there i think they're trying to push and and it is that that he has so much going on every time he gets a new singer or something going on that uh that there's just not enough time for anyone to do anything else you know that, that's right. involved with it so uh wow but you know any anybody that that would come in and and do vocals or anything else for him, uh, is it's got other things going on, and they're going to have to you know you know, you have to wait till till the Vinny thing takes off, and before you can just you know quit your whole livelihood of, of music or whatever you do, you know, to, to worry about that. So again, um, you know, not to harp on that at all, but that's that's pretty much it in a nutshell, man, and and that's my opinion on it. As, as far as why, you know, you don't hear anything from this guy. I, I saw it firsthand, and I and I'm I wouldn't bullshit anyone out there about it. Uh, Maybe, oh, yeah. but I I expected to hear a lot more than that. And so many others that have that have dealt with this guy recent years have seen a lot of the same thing because I've talked to a lot of the same to those people uh, right. because they reached out to me after this. Hey, man, I was I was I, I dealt with this too, you know, and and we shared stories. Uh, but, um, uh, the common, the common thread is that, uh, he never was ready to play, never was ready to play and just wanted to do a loose, a loose jam of this or that, or some blues or whatever like that. Right. And, um, uh, you know, uh, that was, you know, that, that wasn't very encouraging as far as, you know, saying, saying, okay, is, can you do, you know, 12 to 15 songs? of yours you know so right, right. yeah so the, yeah again it's a slippery story <laughs> it's a, that that's a streamlined version but that hit on a lot of details that i haven't ha haven't hit with a lot of interviews either about about that story but uh yeah it's it in the end it was a, it was a cool experience to, to get to do i guess because of of uh the legend legendary status or notorious right. status there right. <laughs> a little bit of both I always say you know when when blabbermouth and you, you know ultimate classic rock and people like that picked up on it my name was out there it's it's all it's either whichever way you want to consider it it's either an honorable mention or a, a dishonorable mention whichever way you want to look at it <laughs> well you know they say you know any publicity is good publicity so so you know and and then and in the thoughts in the back of my mind too i'm like man this is hitting right at the right time too our album's getting ready to come out and so so this is gonna you know you know hopefully there'll, there'll be a lot of attention like you know what's this no love lost thing you know over here that, that this guy's doing right so right. that that was always in my mind as well too you know so kill two birds with one stone i hope that worked out with you you know for you because you know getting out there and 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 hearing the quality of this music, you know, then having that situation. So it, it's nice to see that they actually got you out there. So hopefully, you, you know, that's something that you could build off of because, hey, listen, my audience, the people that are listening into this, this is some great stuff. 
This guy's an excellent vocalist. He brings everything to the table. You know, the, the, the great 80s sound that we all love, and it's professional. And I think that's the part from just what you said right there is exactly yeah. what we look for. You know, it was a little bit worrisome. <clears throat> it was a little bit worrisome too when that when the Benny gig came down, you know, and, and we were I was uh uh finishing up vocals for the album, you know, right when all that was going down, when I was rehearsing to go out to, to do the Benny thing as well. Mm -hmm. And and so uh it was a little bit uh worrisome to me because I was like, okay, you know, what if this takes off and, and, and here's our, you know, I'm finishing our album and I'm, you know, I can't stop right now because we, we put all this in, into it, you know, and tears and blood and sweat and everything else into our album. And we got to finish right. that. Right. And, uh, actually, you know, I let Benny hear, uh, not some of our new stuff, but some of our last album and stuff like that. And he really liked it a lot. So that was, right. that was, you know, for a professional songwriter, uh, even if it was him, to, to give us a thumbs up on that stuff. That, that was great, man. And so, uh, yeah, it, it was a little worrisome to, to worry about, you know, what was going to happen, you know, with that. But, yeah. um, uh, like I say, I, 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 I thought, well, that's going to be perfect because they're all, it's all going to kind of come together and, and promote each other, hopefully, you know, and, uh, right. uh yeah. I hope it, but, I hope it helped out. I'll tell you what, I really do. After going through all that, you know, you got to well, have that, something positive come out of it. And I it think was, it did. You know, yeah, it was. I was yeah, I still held held my head up because I'm like, man, I got the best album we've done ever coming right. out. There's no reason to get down about this at all. And I knew that was going in. I knew, I was like, you know, I knew it was going to end somewhere, you know, and right. probably very quickly, you know, right. judging <laughs> everyone right. else been through been through that ringer right. and uh but i didn't know it would be quite that fast but right. uh but there again you know it's a very 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 touchy uh kind of uh personality there with him i guess you know and uh yeah. and i'm starting to see exactly why is you know there's there's a narrative there but anyway right. uh, aside from that the no love lost uh uh, album came out and the singles came out and and that was just a big a big uplifting right there you know from everybody right. and it, it's it's been very positive so far very positive yeah you can see the pride when you talk about this and that's that's great to hear too because you, i know you put a lot of effort into this and you can oh, just yeah. tell by by you know the quality uh, of these yeah. songs of this album and it's it's really something special well thank you man we really appreciate that we it's, it's, it's our heart and soul, man. It's what we do. I've, I've done, I've done this, you know, written songs and played music for 47 years now, right. since it's 1976 or so. And it, it's, it, I've learned so much along the way and just, you know, tried to, uh, pick little things up from, uh, from, uh, all my favorite artists and stuff like that and be conscious of, 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 of what, is making the stuff that I'm listening to work so well in my right. mind and, and everybody else's mind and hearts, you know? Right. right. So that's, I think that's important is to, is to, to pick up on that, you know, and, you know, make notes of it if you have to, but, but you, you keep that and, and be, again, be conscious of that when you, when you put your own music together. You've and, done, that's great to hear that too. You know, looking out for, you know, yeah. like you said, what, what works. And, and yeah. I think you guys did it. I mean, strong, a much stronger album and much stronger right. everything all the way, all together. Yeah. Hey, we're talking about, you know, you know, obviously the new album, you know, and, and all the good things that are happening with that. How about the band start? You know, you guys, you know, obviously three albums out now and, and three excellent albums too. I mean, they're all great listens all the way through. And I think you guys really, you know, took it over the top of this one, obviously, but you know, how did the band get started and, and where did all this begin at? We, uh, we had a, uh, a band back around 1990, 1991 that was trying to get signed uh, called Dimage. Very, uh, very melodic, hard rock, very, had all the hits ready to go, the, the ballad, the power ballad, the, the, the uh, right. everything ready for the labels that we could. And we were, we were shopping it to all the labels back then. And they loved that material. Uh, some of that material actually ended up on the first No Love Lost album, stuff like Friend of Pain and things like cool. that. Those kind of Our ideas. Stuff. Yeah. Yeah. 
And uh, so we were shopping those those ideas to labels. And around that time, that's when the when the big changeover was getting ready to happen. And all the all the A and R people were telling us, "Yeah, we hear we hear the hits, we hear the hits, but uh, they're just not letting us sign or pick up any more bands like that. It's going to be grunge, or we're, they're pulling the scene out from under us, basically." Right, and I'm like, oh, can't you just milk one more out of this? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> it is coming. One more, yeah. But uh, anyway, so um, and fast forward to 2006, some of those members of that band, Jason Staten, uh, Russ Kale on bass, Brian Asbell on drums, and myself, uh, were in were were in the first No Love Lost uh, genesis of the band there. And what we did was around that time, we, we just went into the studio with the uh, intention of writing a bunch of songs that we like. A lot of them were going to be the melodic hard rock stuff that, that we like, like like you hear on Last Call and stuff like that. Uh, right. Some other ideas were bluesier, you know, more Paul Rogers kind of stuff. Um, some uh, uh, maybe a King's X influence idea over here, you know, right. whatever. We, there's no set style that we were that we were doing at that time. You know, we just wanted to write. A bunch of songs you know 15 13 15 songs you know and and produce them and you know and and put them out on our own and that's what we did and we came up with the name no love lost i think it was a, it was a we had a list of names and and those that was one of the ones that 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 stuck with us that rolled off well and and you know uh didn't sound too pretentious or whatever like that it, it sounded right. okay a lot of the right. bands had the three word names back then, you know, so, okay, no love. <laughs> That's right. Three doors down. Okay. That fits, you know, three days grace, whatever. <laughs> right, right, right. So we were going with that. Um, so yeah, in the first album, that's why the first album, you hear a bunch of, of different kind of styles and textures on that first album uh, that we put out. And what we did, we put it out on our own at first. And then after that, uh, John at, at Kibble Records heard the album and heard a lot of promise in all the melodic hard rock songs that were on that. And so uh, he signed us up and and re repackaged and re uh, mixed and everything the album and put it out in 2013. And it came out uh, the same weekend as we did uh, Melodic Rock Fest number three in Chicago. We played up there with some of our our biggest heroes, man. Uh, you know, yes. Steve like Jerry, Jeff Scott Soto was there, you know, uh, Jimmy Jameson, just, just the band oh, Eclipse nice. from Sweden. Uh, Christ, Harris, those guys Harris, are great. Harris, all our favorite great. melodic great hard thing. people were yeah. there. And so that was a great thing to be a part of. And our album came out that same weekend. So we released it Perfect. there on the table yep. that weekend. And uh, from there, uh, we lost a few members along the way that uh, wanted to go, go and do other things. You know, uh, it's hard to get, you know, when you're doing all original material and you're kind of waiting in between playing so much like we do and, and not concentrating so much on, we got to go out every weekend and play and, and, and play, play, play like that and, and satisfy that part of it. Right. We're satisfying more the writing and recording end of it. You know, when you don't do that so much, people people don't don't feel as, as fulfilled, and they and they leave and go and do other things and stuff like that. And that's all cool. And right. so, uh, but all of us are still very good friends and, and and longtime brothers and stuff. I mean, we go all of us go back. I mean, way back to the mid '80s and early '80s together, man, and different bands on the scene together, and 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 that's how that's we cool. all came together when we did the Dimage Band. Right. in the early 90s was putting together the strongest musicians from the area that had the look and that that would write their own songs and so um so after that so we, we fast forward up to like to the bliss era and um that album came out around you know 2020 with the pandemic hitting and everything and even with with the pandemic hitting i think a lot of people were were buying physical musical product at home or online because we did very well with bliss it came out and uh, as the number one album for the month of may at neh records uh which is uh one of the big melodic hard rock uh retailers in the in the, in the world right. and then and in, in the at the end of the year 2023 it was the number one uh selling 
melodic hard rock album for them for the whole year. So we're very proud of that. That's one. Great. It's a great and album. A lot of stuff and a lot of special stuff on the bliss as well. And then uh, we, we, we move into, um, to this new era with no, with uh last call. And uh, we had, we, we had Jason on board on guitar and uh, Jason had a lot of uh, personal things going on to where he uh, commitments uh, job commitments and stuff like that, actually, to where he, he wasn't able to, you know, put as much time into the band and to writing as he wanted to, you know. And so mm -hmm. um, he decided to, you know, during the recording process and demoing process of Last Call, he decided to step aside. Uh, we're still very good, close friends with Jason. And and one of his great ideas that he, that he uh, uh, contributed to Last Call was Love Gone Wrong, which is a great song. And uh, yeah, and so, uh, but uh, Jason, he'll be heard from again. I'm sure he's he's just taking a little time off and, and regrouping and getting getting stuff together. But it was very apparent that Mark had all the ammo on, on guitar that we needed for for a one guitar band. And again, you know, he's brought all these incredible, completely finished ideas, start to finish, in. And it was it was it was obvious. Okay, he's ready, and then we can do this. And I had to convince Mark a little bit that he could, that he could do that. He's like, no, nah, man, we need, we really need another guitar. I'm like, no, man, I'm telling you, you can do this. It's like Journey with a docking edge. With That's a docking right. Edge. Perfect. And he said, you, you can do this. And and absolutely, he's proven that right now. And he's definitely proven that on the live stage for sure. But that's where we are, man. And, and that that's kind of the genesis of No Love Lost was way back in 2006 when we started, you know, and uh, – right. Yeah, and you know, first album in 2013, and and so on. We did take a uh, a long time between uh, the the first album release and Bliss because again, you know, we were regrouping, rewriting right. songs, demoing stuff. You know, when we when we when we lose members, the demo process starts over again. You know, we we right. kind of start over again. You know, because right. you have different ideas coming to the table for that song. You know. And so you and and, it, and sometimes it's a lot a lot better, and you're like, oh, well, this has got to change. We got to we got to go back. Go right, back. right. So a lot of late nights, a lot of late night drives, and um, I mean, you know, fifty miles one way uh, for me back then to the studio. Now it's it's three hours and like hundred and eighty miles. To <laughs> Big difference, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, what we do, you know, and it's the passion, right. you know, that that keeps me going and doing that. But yeah, and we're. We're just excited about, like I say, we're really excited about the new stuff that we're going to do for the next album too. Oh, uh, we're, we're ready to go on that. Like, we, I, like I say, I've heard a whole full album of, of ideas for sure. I can't, I, I can't wait to hear it. You know, uh, and, and you just mentioned that about Mark too. You know, stepping in like that because this this album, you know, it is a one guitar band, but yeah. the it sounds so big. That it almost yeah. sounds like there's two guitars playing. So that's you guys he's, nailed it. I mean, really did. Such a meaty guitar tone is huge, and right. everything you know. And he's worked on that so much. I, I think he uses a, a Kemper or a Bray profile. Or a, Mark, uh, you'll have to chime in on this one <laughs> <laughs> for for the uh, for the details of that. But yeah, it's it's just absolute monster guitar tone, and especially live, and I love it. And every time he just cranks up, I, I absolutely love it. And it's not also not to diminish the uh, contribution of Matt uh, Crow and Jason Collins as well to to Last Call and to the live band. I mean, uh, the all these guys, all three of these guys, have really stepped up as far as bringing the live aspect of No Love Lost together, and you know, putting together a pro a pro running show that we can go out and, and open some, some cool shows and stuff this year and, and, and do and, and promote this, this album and, and, and do it in a, a real pro national act type way, man. And these guys have really, really brought it, man. I'm really proud of Matt, Jason and Mark. I really am. I can't say enough about all these guys. That's great to hear. You know, that you guys are that tight <laughs> and it comes across when you play too. I mean, you could hear oh, that, you know, that band yeah. is, is, hey, we're all gelling here. And... Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. We we love that. That's what we get off on. That's what we get off on and what we live for. And to play your own music, uh, you know, after this long 
you know, doing it and, right. and, and get that satisfaction. You know, it, it, even if it's not from the audience, we'll get it from each other, you know, on stage. Like you say, we're, we're having a great time and, and smiling and, and gelling with each other. And uh, a it's lot of the happen. audience pick up on that too. And they, and they see that and they see how natural a, 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 a magic that we have. And so that That's definitely to hear. Happens this weekend for sure. For sure. I, I got to hit John up and tell him, uh, you know, we need a Pittsburgh date. Yes, Get we you do. you guys in town and uh, yeah, there's no doubt we, about it. I'd love to see you. I've been up there to uh to the to the place uh Jurgles. That's a that's a yeah, great yeah place. yeah yeah oh yeah. We saw uh we went up there a few years ago and saw UFO with Saxon opening. That's a good Two show. My, yeah, Luke, just just you know, greatest bands of my of my <laughs> my favorite stuff. And so I got to see both of those together. And then we went and we, we've been up there to see Glenn Hughes a couple of times too. You know, that's great. Cool. Great fan of Glenn Hughes's. But yeah, I love to play there. That'd be, that'd be the perfect spot. Perfect spot. I'm going to have to work on it here. Yeah. That's we could do, man. So get these guys here, but we need to hear this. Yeah. <laughs> we were just that's... there a couple of us about not even a month ago for a lynch mob. Oh Yeah. Yeah. So they bring in a lot of a lot of good shows. So you guys would be a great yeah, fit there. I saw, I saw Mr. Big was playing there a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, too. Yeah, it sold out, and we didn't get a chance to get in there, right. unfortunately. Yeah. But yeah, you know, we got we got to get you guys here. There's no doubt about it. For us, it's maybe six hours for us when we go up there, but we love going up there for shows because some there's some uh, some of our favorite artists. You know, they don't make it all the way down to the south. You know where we are, so we have to we have to venture up to Pennsylvania or uh, or uh, you know Kentucky or out to Tennessee or somewhere like that to, to see our our favorite guys. You know, right. sometimes. Yeah, it's tough when you get some of the. I know a lot of the shows even miss it here. You know, I mean, it's uh, they'll bypass. They'll be like ones in Reading, and then the next ones in like Youngstown, Ohio. So they they right. bypass us by a few hours each. Right. Okay. Well, they all go by the demographic of, you know, from the last tour, what's the numbers, what's the numbers, you know, right. <laughs> make any money in this state or, or didn't we, you know, and it's not a really a, a, a indictment on the state or anything, you know, that they don't like it. It's just, they, you know, they don't really route it. They, they just, they just go where they tell them to go, you know, <laughs> that's it. You got to be smart when you get out there anymore. Right. You know, that's what they're doing, you know, and they're trying to, you know, trying to make the, the most, most of it, you know. But it's, it's a heck, heck of a scene out there, particularly for all original stuff. And and particularly if you were, uh, you know, I'm, I'm just glad we're not trying to do it you know, like like some of these young bands and trying to just go out on the road, you know, at, at our age, you know, trying to go out on the road and, and, and do this kind of stuff and, you know, live in a van or, or something oh, like yeah. that. I've done that kind of stuff, you know, way back. <laughs> right. But, right. Uh, you know, at, at, at this point, you know, it, it's very, it's very, um, it's very cool to have a label behind you like like John's label and and you know have that kind of support and you know great packaging uh great uh production I mean I can't say enough about what Ty and Eric do for the yeah. production of all the kibble releases just just fantastic and you know it's 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 we're very blessed to have that you know at, at our ages and and writing writing our own songs and writing this kind of music too, you know, I mean, you know, it's not, it's not being done, you know, a lot, you know, it's, it's so it's, it's, it, we're very blessed, this situation, we really are. I agree that, you know, I, I love what John does too, that you just brought that up and, and I see that, you know, the packaging, Yeah. you know, that yeah. when you get a CD, I don't know if I got it in the screen good enough, can you see it? Yeah. Okay. And then, you know, obviously the CD and everything he puts together is, you know, it's amazing packaging. I'll tell you what, there's a there's a lot of ammo in this case, believe me, for everybody that's listening. There's <laughs> that's no great. doubt about it. You know, that's we talked about a little bit earlier about, uh, you know, you mentioned a little bit about your influences. And we talked yeah. about, you know, like Foreigner. And I hear a lot of like like Giant in there, you know, that classic sound and Hardline all comes yeah. together. What, what about some of your influences, Scott? Like who somebody influences it? You know, that, oh, yeah. uh, you could let us know about early Maybe. on. Early on, it would be Elton John for sure, and then the Amazing. whole melodic, melodic sensibility that he had, and he was right. a great singer. But not only Absolutely. that, 
I immediately, uh, you know, uh, identified with, wow, that's that, that part of that song is just great. Just rips your heart out. And, uh, and yeah. you know, and I wanted, I want to do stuff like that. You know, that was very inspiring to hear that kind of stuff and that kind of great songwriting on top of musicianship. I mean, he had some of the best, the greatest right. musicians and unbelievable. Uh, so some of that early, early, you know, mid seventies Elton stuff is very influential to me, you know, blue moves, uh, Captain Fantastic. I freaking love that stuff. Every He's song. Amazing. Was, yeah. He really is. And then uh, of course, right after that, uh, I discovered Kiss through a fan, through a, a friend at, at school, you know, and I got the Kiss Alive album. And from there, it was all things Kiss, you know. Right, also, right. of course, was a big influence then, you know, on on vocals and and even songwriting. You know, I, I, I started really digging the way Paul would write a song. And, and then when he did like his solo album in 78, a lot it's of great stuff. Great album. That, oh, that yeah. Influenced me to this day. Really right. is. Is, yeah. And, you know, along the same time, you know, was the great Derek St. Holmes, you know, for, for Ted Nugent, of course, you know, I'm like, man, this guy is soulful as hell. He's great. And just, and it is still phenomenal, still phenomenal to this day, big influence. And, you know, around 76, of course, Brad dealt with the first Brad Boston album came out, man. That was just one of my favorites. Yep. Complete game changer vocally, sound wise, guitar wise. It's like, listen to this album how the, how did they do this <laughs> how did they right, do this right. you know and then not long after that you know you had stuff like the uh the new wave of british heavy metal coming in you know so very influenced by scorpions then you know around you know 78 79 yeah. uh scorpions uh, as well as dio with rainbow uh right. joe lynn turner with rainbow after right after that you know he's amazing and, uh, yeah very much into that stuff and I can't leave out UFO either. You know, uh, Phil Mogg is not the the most incredible vocalist, but an absolutely incredible songwriter and and feeling and passion and emotion that he puts into it. And mm -hmm. lyricist is just brilliant. Uh, but yeah, uh, right after that, you know, UFO came onto the onto the thing. You know, and I didn't really get influenced by the 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 medley. Metal, metal stuff you know like Hofford and, and Dickinson until a little later on you know right. but uh, I always took those melodic first influences you know with along with me for the ride you know in, in anything that I did and uh, I, I actually started out as a singing drummer uh, I was a drummer that, that sang a lot of backups you know in my band yeah, and yeah. sang a song, a song per set you know by myself on lead vocals and uh it wasn't until about 1984 till uh, my uh, band that I, that I had at the time, Cerebus, which was a heavy metal band, uh, started writing music and recording music. That's when I stepped out back out front and stayed out front as a singer from there on out. Right. Uh, and also, I wasn't the kind of drummer that uh, I knew right off that I was not going to be the kind of drummer with all that finesse, no Neil Peart kind of stuff. You know, I couldn't do that kind of stuff. I was going to be in the lay back in the pocket kind of thing, you know, Andy Parker, uh, you know, right. Herman Rare Bell, you know, those Keep kind of, you know, yeah, 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 Phil Rudd in the in the pocket kind of laid back kind of thing because I was singing at the same time. I wasn't wasn't worried about doing any kind of flashy thing. I was worried about singing and and just playing the beat <laughs> to get to That's the right. song. So, so it was it was really apparent early on that I wasn't going to be that kind of drummer, and I never was going to try and 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 play that way and i i really felt all along that it was it wasn't that important to be you know all this flash and finesse it was more important to be able to lay in the pocket and to be able to write songs and to, and you know to be able to to keep to have grooves and stuff like that to, to and, and move people that way then move people with with wow listen to what that guy just did you know after i heard all the world's a stage that that uh, the first time I was like, mm, there's no way I can do that. I'd better stick with the Peter Chris licks. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I never stayed on drums, but I, I did do, uh, I did do drums for, uh, one or one or two of the service releases that we, that we put out. Um, uh, but yeah, that was a heavy metal project that, that went through the eighties that, that we did. And, and we did, a a couple albums for new Renaissance records out of, out of California. Um, uh, that band did did pretty well overseas, 
and and we just recently were able to go overseas and 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 finally go to Germany and 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 see fans for that band over there. That's cool. Years. And that was that was really surreal. Right. But yeah, uh, my heart's always been you know I love the heavy metal stuff and everything, but my heart and 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 writing has always been came really easy to do more melodic stuff, you know, more melodic and more commercial, you know, stuff like that. And so that's what, you know, I've, I've always tried to concentrate on is, is, is that when I, when I'm putting to, a band together or, or writing music is, is, you know, the more commercial melodic sensibility, keeping that for sure. That's, that's right. very important to me, but yeah, I mean, you know, that's, that's, some of the influences now uh, would be people like Russell Allen. You know, of course, the great Glenn Hughes are still one of my biggest influences right. and uh, just a sweetheart of a guy. Uh, I mean, uh, so many great singers out. Dino Jalusic, a new, new young guy out there, man, is just really kicking ass. I had uh, him on earlier uh, last year. Great uh, guy, yeah. Man, yeah, man. I love all that new stuff that they're putting out, man, and, and, and some of those singers uh, – that are uh, in the melodic metal world, you know, in Europe and stuff. I listen to a lot of that stuff. Uh, right. I, I really like the new uh, uh, Revolution Saints. I think Dean is just phenomenal. It's amazing, he is phenomenal, and uh, his writing is great. You know, I listen to a lot of that stuff, and I try to keep in touch, keep up with all that uh, that new stuff that's coming out by our favorite artists. You know, that are big in that world, and uh, Michael Sweet. That's another one. You know, of course. Uh, iconic that that was a great release last year uh right. and so yeah you know i keep up with all that stuff and 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 still very influenced by by those artists as well and influenced by the production and the writing that they're doing now because i really think that's that's touching on a lot of stuff that that no love loss loss would like to touch on that the same kind of styling you know right right yeah. and you guys really did it to, with this one you know it, it's a uh... John even asked me, he said, what do you think of the production, you know, because he, you know, we, we talk about different things like that. I said, John, I said, you guys nailed this. I said, this is top notch, you know, right where you want to be, right in the wheelhouse. This is a, this is an album where, you know, the best way I could put it is I'm going to sit in my truck and I'm going to throw this in and I'm going to blow out all the windows, you know, uh -huh. and, and then do it again. I mean, that's, that's really weird. If we only had the six, the six by nine mind blowers back in the like back in the old <laughs> days, <laughs> blow the back window out with them. That's yeah, it. That's this it. is one of those albums that could definitely do that. Especially, you know, it ain't over, and from it ain't over till the to the end. You know, it's just a it ain't over till it's over. It it really kicks. It really it does. does. The whole, it's got a really good punch to it. Great sound overall. I noticed a, a big difference too. Uh, you know, listening to it on uh, streaming or like, like off of off of the YouTube clip, you know, like listening to that in the car, in the car or the truck. Uh, yeah. It sounds great. That sounds fantastic, you know. But then when you put in that physical CD product, man, it's just like night and day. Just it, it just really hits you and you just, you know, cracks your ribs. It's the way it should be. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Really good. So I, I urge everybody to get that physical product for sure. But we are uh, talking about right after uh, not long into the year, maybe into the spring, uh, looking into getting it on some of the streaming platforms. Because, I mean, you know, that's the way it's done now. And we, we do want to have people aware of it. And it makes it a lot easier to share. The portability is, 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 is really convenient. Of course, I love it myself. I right. mean, I keep all my favorite music on, on the phone as well as, you know, as on disc, you know, but, but yeah, it, it's, it's, it, that's coming for sure too, for sure. We, we're looking into doing that too. I know everybody but will I, be happy that, with that. The CD just really, really kicks. It really does. It's got a great, strong sound to it. It does. And I listen in headphones, so I know, uh, oh, gosh, I've had yeah. some, I, I've slept well the last couple of nights with no eardrums, let's put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> great 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 yeah it's a great sound cd it really is and again uh, yeah hats off to ty sims eric johnson all the work that they put into it and uh i mean they they really outdone themselves on this one 
for us anyway, for sure. No for doubt sure. about it. You know, you, you, you touched a little bit about, uh, you know, what, what's coming up for the remainder of 2024 for no love lost, you know, live shows, uh, you know, what do you yeah. guys have planned for us out there? We have a lot of surprises around, uh, our last call theme from the album. We have a lot of surprises coming from that. And we have, uh, a lot of surprises coming for live shows too. Some really cool big things that we're going to do. And we're going to continue to jump on as many local and regional things as we can as well. Right. And, you know, keep the fire burning, keep the, keep the, uh, keep the band tight, keep it rolling. And, uh, there's no stopping now because we got to, you know, we want to, we want to stay out and we've already got the, we got bitten with the live bug now. And so oh, we you're wanna, set now you're done. Yeah. You know, we'll <laughs> stay out there and keep doing that, you know, and, and, uh, presenting the music to the fans and, and live, you know, and, and that's, uh, that's the, the best way to sell it really is to, is to, to sell it to them live and, and have a really good sounding and really good entertaining, you know, show of music to do that. But yeah, we've got a lot planned right. for the year and we're going to continue right on and rolling with the last call 2024 tour, if you will. <laughs> nice. Uh, but yeah, we've got a lot of, a lot of cool things planned around, around the last call theme. Uh, I'll, I'll just say that. And uh, look for all that, and it's going to be some really cool surprises, and the fans are going to going to dig it. I think that's great. That's great to hear. How about yeah. any last words, Scott? I mean, you know, I, this was a great interview. I mean, we we got into a lot of stuff. Thank you for having um, me on. Oh man, no, I... last words would be uh, thank you, everybody, for your undying support from 2013 all the way up to now. For no, for no love lost. And we really appreciate it. And uh, I want to say thank you to Matt, Jason and Mark and to John Kibble and everybody at the, at the label for all your hard work, all your dedication to the band. And uh, we're not going to let you down. And to the fans, we're not going to let you down either. We're going to, we're going to be out there this year, seeing you live and look for us. And I'm sure we'll be at the, uh, the new England rock fest too this year. That, that John will put on and we're going to have a good time this year. And we really hope to see everybody out there on the road and do yourself a favor and pick up this CD order it from, from Kibble records right now, because uh, it's, it's, it's like John said, you'll be transported to the eighties and it's an intentional, it's an intentional trip back to the eighties and uh, the styling right. and, 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 Everything in the songs, I think, I think you'll find very refreshing. I promise you. I totally agree, Scott. Hey, I yeah. want to say thank you for, uh, you know, for being on the show. I mean, I, I loved having you on. You know, thank I love the band, obviously. Uh, thanks to John Kibble as well. I mean, John's been a, you know, he's been a supporter. He's been a, you know, a guy that I could talk to and, you know, feed things off of and things like that. And, and when he sends me great music like this, I mean, what better way? To say thank you, you know, John, the, the, the CD, I'm CD. A fan of of the eighty style uh, music and everything. He really is, man. He goes back to to that era and really embraces that whole styling and 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 everything. And and he's really into that and really wants to to put the best uh, type of product like that out for for all the fans to hear from all the Kibble bands, really. And right. and and that's 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 a really positive thing. It really is. It's, it's really cool. You don't see that much now. So. That's exactly right. Exactly. And Scott, in closing, I want to say thank you for doing what you do, man. Because, thank you. you know, coming from a fan, from my heart, you know, when I get to hear stuff like this, and that's what I tell all the artists that I talk to is, you know, thank you for doing it because it, it, it's it's pieces of your life, you know, and, and you guys are bringing an art to us with all the hard work and the dedication. You know, that, that means so much, man. So thank you for oh, doing it. You. Thank you, buddy. Appreciate that, man. Keep it doing does, it, man, because we love it. it. It means a lot to me, and it means a lot to the rest of the guys, too, man, because we really do live and breathe this, and we literally shed tears over 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 this music sometimes, over the magic, you know, right. and right. stuff like that. And that's really where it's at. You know, when you get that, you know, in a, in a rehearsal, you know, and, and you, you come out of there, and you're like, wow, and you, and you shed a little tear, like, man, this is 
this is going to be good. You know, that's, that's where it's at right there. Even before anybody hears it, you know, even right. before anybody right. hears a note of it outside the band, that's where it's at, you know, for us. And it's really, really a heartfelt experience and a heartfelt um, thing that we do, we do here. And we really appreciate everybody that, that digs no love loss and what we're, what we're doing because it is different than, than, than the typical stuff that's going on nowadays. And, and we really appreciate everybody that embraces that. We really do. It's a great song, man. I wish you guys the best of luck on this too. I mean, I'll, you know, I'll be spreading the word, you know, all, all the fans out there, you know, I, I highly recommend this. I mean, it's not even just recommend it's highly recommend great music, great songs. If you love the eighties and you love the, uh, the big hooks, the big choruses, I mean, this thing is a, uh, is a gift wrap for you. <laughs> Perfectly so. The package, even the, the 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 bubble mailer that it comes in is. It's, that's right. It's, that's right. You know, he, that's another plus of the, of the of our label. It's it's just very it's very unique, very unique. Yeah, he very does cool. some great stuff. I'll tell you what, yeah. he really does. So Scott, thanks for being on the show. Um, Thank you, know, you I look, really appreciate it, man. Thank you. Thank I look you forward for to get. I look forward to getting this out to to all the fans and you know some great stories here, man. I love talking to you. Anything that you guys do, you know, you're welcome back on the show anytime. I'd love to have you. We'll be sure. supporting sure. you. We'll be supporting Kibble Records and, and John and the things that he does. And and yeah. uh, keep doing it, brother. Absolutely. Maybe we could get the rest of the guys on here too, you know. Oh, absolutely. That'd be awesome. Everybody everybody have a little powwow. But, yes, thank you very much, John. Really appreciate it, man. All right. Thanks, God. Have a good night. And uh, hey, keep rocking, man. You too, brother. Thank you. Bye-bye. God bless. We'll see you.